Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. Currently the evening here. I hope you're all having a good day. This is going to be the LA King season preview. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borg. If you enjoy the content, subscribe down below or above at the widget that makes it nice, seamlessly, and easy at the end of the video. A lot of projections coming into the season have the LA Kings listed as one of the bubble team's fifth place. Some people have them coming in fourth place in the Pacific Division. The Hockey News has them in fifth place. Will they be able to supplant that and or surpass that, excuse me, and become a better team? There's a lot of ifs. That is probably why they're considered bubble teams. Like, for example, how does Tobias Bjornfer continue to develop? Well, needs to show more than he did in his 33 games last year. What is Drew Doughty at this point of his career? Him and Michael Anderson, I think, were one of the more underrated tandems last year. Even though Drew Doughty still gets a lot of crap because he ain't the same Drew Doughty as he was and gets paid $11 million. It ain't his fault. You paid him $11 million. He's not the one that, um, he's just the one that accepted it and now gets paid it, I should say. So, um, he still works well with Anderson. That's a good tandem. Tobias Bloomfoot, I think, could work very well lefty-righty with Matt Roy, who's one of the best defensive defensemen in the league. And then you have Alexander Edler, who's one of the better veterans just to have around to be able to kind of mentor and just almost be a player coach to your defenseman in there as well. And then you have Sean Walker, who you developed as a nice defenseman as well. Plus, when it comes to defense, you, of course, have Brant Clark, um, as well, that you were able to draft, who is going to probably even maybe potentially be in the league as soon as next year. Plus, you still have Ali Mata, once he is not injured, who is only out for day to day. So there's still a good defense in LA. You, of course, have the emerging Cal Pedersen, who really did emerge last year. Didn't have a good win-loss record, but that was because of the team. That's not a goalie stat. Other than that, he looked very good. Jonathan Quick showed that he can just kind of be that Brian Elliott level, just make the saves you need to make back up at this point. Then you brought in Brendan Lemieux, who you can put in whenever you play those tougher-nosed teams, that you have to get a little bit more tenacity and aggressiveness and physical bruteness in there. That's the guy you have. You have Elias Anderson if you want to add a little bit more speed with a little bit of skill to your bottom six as well. So you got good depth on this team. But the ifs on why would change you from a bubble team to a winning team is, one, this potentially great young line of Vladimir Tikachev, Gabriel Velarde, and Arthur Kaliev. If they are all together, that is the potential to be one of the best young lines we've ever seen. But that depends how Tikachev um, translates from being one of the KHL greats to trying to turn into being one of the NHL good players and then maybe becoming a great player. Gabriel Velarde, we still want to see continue to develop. Had a good season last year. Can he have a very good season this year? And then potentially even more than that. Arthur Kaliev is a beautiful sniper, a great player. I think he's going to be a guy that just knows how to set up, be great on the power play, set up in the slot, get his one-timer opportunities, and just be a good overall player. And then, obviously, you also have Quinn Byfield and Alex Turcotte. So this team has a lot coming for them. They got a lot churning for them. You also got Carl Grunstrom, who I still think has more left in that stick, coming over from Toronto, not even at his prime year yet, still only at 23. Blake Lazat still proved to be a good bottom, really, four probably. Um, bottom six, uh, sixer type player that you could kind of throw into the third line if you have to, but is a good fourth line center. And then Trevor Moore is a good fourth line player that can be on a third line if you need him to as well. So you have the nice finish of the puzzle piece player. Now you need, you also brought in Victor Arvidsson, which was a great move, a good, great 200 foot player, plus Philippe Dino saving the best for Lance, which was a great 200 foot player that you brought in as well to add to that defense that you already have with Kopitar, you already have with Dustin Brown. Now you have it with Arvidsson again, and you have it with um, Adrian Kempe plus Philippe Dino you brought in. So you have a good team that can play on both ends better than it could last year. That's why I think this team, if these guys, if Tikachev, Velarde, and Kali, if that makes a really good line, if Tikachev translates well, you have obviously Turcotte and Byfield right knocking on the door. That will probably eventually be up this year. Same with Fagemo, who could also be up Rasmus Kupari, and Akil Thomas, who's a great 200-foot player himself. So you have a lot of guys that are knocking right on the door for this LA Kings team. You have Anderson and Dowdy, who is one of the more underrated defensive pairings, like I said. You have Bjornfurt and Roy, who I think is going to all depend on how Bjornfurt develops. If he keeps going and churning, then this season is going to have a better chance to be successful. Plus, of course, whenever um, you are able to also have, um, not Christian Wallon, and Ali Mata come back, that will be very helpful and very successful for the team 
as well is Andre Sato who the Kings were actually able to get going last year over there for LA for y'all, who you also have on offense. So you have a good potential offensive team, I think, especially with the youngsters integrating themselves. That just brings energy into the veterans, just brings a lot more spunk into the team. And I think that's really going to go a long way with this LA team. I think Cal Pedersen is going to continue to develop. It's all going to depend how these young guys integrate themselves and how they continue to develop on if this team can go from a bubble team and how Tikachev integrates himself from the KHL to being a winning team that then can get into the playoffs and jump from that five spot to at least that three spot you need to be in. You brought in Arvison. You brought in the Nov. Let's see how they integrate themselves. I think both will have successful season in L.A., but we still have to see it to prove it. And then the youngsters, we still have to see it to prove it. I think that has a chance to be a very good line if they stick with that. And I think all those youngsters have a chance to be very good, as well as the Turcotts and Byfields and Clarks and uh, Fagamos and the Fobbers I didn't even mention and Kapari and Akil Thomas and the Helgi Grands in the future. So you got a good future. You have a solid present. Now it's time to prove if you can go from being one of those bubble teams to being a playoff team. I hope you all enjoyed this LA Kings season preview. Subscribe down below if you enjoy the content. Up above on the easy-to-use widget. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody, and enjoy the NHL season. Peace out, and good luck, Kings fans.